Okay. As I was saying, we are doing this session on experimental methods and medicinal chemistry. And uh, it's a great pleasure for me to introduce the next speaker, Esther, Dr. Esther Torrente from ERBM in Rome. And she's going to present a talk about structure based discovery of novel shift to well understanding in English. Please. So, thank you so much, everyone, for this introduction and for sure for the invitation. It's to me a really big honor to be here and to have the possibility to share with you our most relevant results in the field of shift to well understanding chemical. But also, it, I am happy to be here because I have the opportunity to meet old friends and to establish new connections that it is really important as well for the science. So for the people that is not familiar with it, CIP2, uh, CIP2 is a cytoplasmatic known receptor for the pyrosensor satellites that is encoded by the PTP and level genes. So this is an important target because it's involved in many biological processes such as cell growth and cell proliferation. In particular, this is a target is because it uh, plays an important role, uh, role sorry, in the regulation of, multi, of multiple signal translation uh, pathways. As for example, as here that is represented, that is the plasma cascade. So the CIP2, CIP2 sorry, induce this cascade that is translated in the transfer cell growth. On the other hand, with this CIP2, this inhibit, this is uh, the opposite behavior and also serves the cancer cell growth arresting. <clears throat> Therapy works. So, this target is really important because it represents a novel therapeutic approach against cancer. So, this is the full length of the CIP2 protein that is composed for, by three different domains so, the NS2, the NS2, and the PTP. The most important is here in the PTP is located the corresponding catalytic site. In basal conditions, CIP2 is in a hell in active state and is characterized by the presence of this close conformation in which the PS2, NS2, and PTP close the, the conformation of the protein and is blocking the active site. Once this protein is activated by the presence of different proteins or peptides, is a given a linear open uh, conformation in which the catalytic site is free. So as usual, in drug discovery, one of the initial approaches in order to identify the small molecule able to inhibit the protein is uh, to, bind or to find molecules able to compare it with the catalytic site. But this is something really challenging, mainly by two reasons. So the first one is the uh, this protein are characterized because uh, the catalytic side, the PTP, are really conserved. So that's mean in which it's more really difficult to find the selectivity. The other important reason is because this PTP, sorry, so this catalytic side are characterized because are, sorry, I am off, okay, are characterized because uh, are uh, really highly not ionizable, and this would mean that your molecule should be presented highly polar group. So, in few words, this represents a really big challenge if you want to further uh, uh, optimize a small molecule to arrive to the drug uh, uh, development. So, here I represent some of this example that I described in the literature, and as you can see here, all of them so with a, a, mole, uh, a molecule being highly polar substituent. And in most of the cases, and as you can see here, it's not possible to get the selectivity for that. And as I told you before, this is problematic because all these compounds so were at poor cell permeability and as well as for sure a uh, low oral viability. So the surface uh, approach for sure to, to try to identify proper good compound is uh, try to find the molecules that are able to bind to a dolesteric pocket. And here is represented the Bionar work for Novartis, in which in 2015, they discovered by ACS campaign, different heat compounds. So this, from this heat compound, were removing all of them that so with a binding interaction with the catalytic site. And this led to the identification of two class of molecules that are represented here, CIP99 and CIP244. This component are characterized because as are binding the CIP2 in two different catalytic sites. So one of them is that it is here that is uh, called a tunnel-like in which the 
a catalytic site, uh, sorry, the pocket and allosteric pockets is localized in the interface of the three domains. The other one is the uh, land slide, in which uh, this allosteric pocket is localized between the interface in the NS2 and PTP. Most of the compounds that are now in clinical trial are characterized because are targeting this catalytic and this allosteric pocket. This is only a dynamic representation of, I told you before, so this is the SIG2 uh, after conformation in which we, have, we, can, we can see here the NS2, the CS2, and the catalytics, and the PTP, sorry, and here in pink is represented the catalytic side. So, no, sorry. Okay. This is the growth conformation in which you can see here the, the catalytic side is broken. And here we can observe the two different allosteric pockets, the tunnel like, in which is in the interface of both of them, and the N uh, NS uh, lunch like, in, sorry, in which it is already the interface between the NS2 and the uh, PTP. Okay. So the first initial compound that were described by Novartis in 2015 is this one, that is the dual compound CIP2, in which uh, is characterized as the toyo before because it's binding in the uh, allosteric pocket in internal like. And this compound there was further optimized to arrive to this compound here, that this TNO uh, 115. So this is the first compound that I, ca I come into a clinical phase in, in the 2017, and up to now, there are more than 15 compounds that are in different uh, physical clinical trials. So this compound is really uh, interesting because it's high potent for sure in the in chip two, but it's selected against different panel of phosphatase and kinase, binds to the lustric pocket, and that is an approved in which this uh, inhibition using allosteric pocket works, and then for sure is efficacy in different animal models in which the map signaling is inhibiting, in particular, rice driving cancer cell proliferation. So, okay, but which is the most important key feature of this two allosteric inhibitor? All of these two inhibitors are characterized mainly by the presence of three different key features. So, the presence of this primary line that is necessary for the potency this central core, and then we have here another aromatic function. So what is the key interaction of this, uh, of this uh, chemical future? First of all, this aiming is important because uh, it's given an stabilizing interaction with two by three hydrogen bonds between with this uh, amino acid, with the backbone of these three amino acids, sorry. The next important interaction is this aromatic ring in which is taking place a cation pure interaction with the arginine. And then we have the central core. This central core usually have two different uh, stabilization uh, interactions that are, are the hydrogen body interaction with the adenine between this nitrogen. And then we have as well the uh, hydrogen binding with this backbone of the glutamine 215. So here in this slide is represented our uh, summary of life which is discovery, our journey in the discovery of CIP2 allosteric inhibitor. So we have in our in the hands uh, four different series of compounds that are protected with our uh, patent, and that uh, I'll call it with the number one, two, three, and four. So in particular, the series three and four are characterized because uh, these compounds, 615 and 233, are characterized by the characteristic of preclinical damage. So all of them are really potent against it too, are all of them available, and uh, results to be efficacy in different xenograph animal model. In particular, this compound, 233, is a compound that may, may have the difference with other competitors because it's the first compound that results to be brain permeable. So this compound results to be effic effic efficacy, sorry, as well in a brain tumor, okay? So now today I would like to focus our attention in particular in the discovery of two series using the MeToo approach. So I told you before, uh, so our main goal here for sure was to identify new CIP2 allosteric inhibitor 
but for our purposes. So it's something that is necessary for the pharmaceutical company in order to further provision compound. It is something really tricky because when we started here our, our um, project in 2018, there was more or less uh, 12 patterns. And up to now, there are more than 121 compounds. The pattern, sorry. So that means that this is a, a stressful situation in which you need to, to be a further progressive compound and you need to identify always something novelty in order to uh, have the uh, intellectual properties. So to do that, we are decided to use a mutual approach. So what does that mean? That means to study in detail all the things that are described in the literature and try to find the, the, the modification in order to find your own progress series. So in particular, we are focus our attention in the central core. And here we are use that the core is coupled hoping. So that means uh, try to find something that is occupating in this, uh, in this part of the pocket that is able to give exactly the same interaction or even better. And this led to the identification of our first series of compounds, imidazopyracin. Now you can see here the main differences is we have a bicycle, five, six uh, member rings in which we have the NH that seems to be interesting for the, for the potency. So this component you can see here, so with um, moderate activity, but was even a little better than the parent compound. The next step was try to understand how to improve the potency. And we are decided to focus our attention in the N. So we uh, did so many compounds, and this is one of the most characteristic because is so in this tricyclic amine. So as you can see here, this compound 891, so with an excellent potency in the biochemical assay, but as well a promising potency in the cell basis assay. So here we tested our compound in two different assays. Phosphor, that is uh, the, the assay that gives you an, an idea about the mechanistic uh, pathway. And then we have another phenotypic assay that is the cell proliferation. So this compound was perfect, we are really happy, and we have decided to study more in detail what's happening with this compound. So that's mean this compound is selected. So the next step was try to, to study the, um, in different biochemical assay the selectivity. And we did uh, this biochemical assay in the C2 CPP, and the C2 one, this is another full study. And as you can see here, we also did a complete selectivity of our compound. So that's mean we have a selective C2 inhibitor. The next step was try to study the binary interaction of our compound with the protein. And to do that, we have decided to do the biophysical MSA, and in particular, the SPR. Here is a survey, the uh, sensograms of our compounds binding to the subtube. And the most important information from here was that the KIB of our compound was modeled in line with the activity that we are serving in our biophysical assay, but the most importantly is the thiol. So this compound, and in particular the resident thiol, so with a high affinity, even tenfold higher than the corresponding parent compound, so C2099. Okay. But what's about? This is a really allosteric inhibitor. So we proved that by X-ray crystallography. And we observed that our compound were binding exactly in the same uh, allosteric pocket and were described by Novartis. And we are keeping more or less exactly the same interaction that they are they were sorted by them by the parent compound. So that's mean we have here the stabilizing interaction between the amine with the two the, the, the three hydrogen bonds uh, with the, this uh, particular amino acid. Then we have as well our cation P interaction. And the most importantly is the interaction that we know your central core. So this time we have observed here a hydrogen bond interaction, but with one amino acid that was never described before, that is the glutamine 249. And most importantly here is this uh, uh, characteristic water molecule there were that uh, improves the, the protein engagement with the protein. And this maybe is the explanation, but we are serving a resident sign even superior to the parent compound. No, with the parent compound, sorry, with the competitor compound. So again, the next step for you when you're working in a drug discovery process is try to study the in vitro and the profile of your compound. And here we are serving that our compound was pretty suitable, that is one important thing, but we are serving many two liabilities. So the first one was the 
moderate to novel in liver microsome, in particular in two species, human and mouse, and then this confirm as well so we an elasticity. So this is not something that is not really wanted for that discovery processes because can give uh, the possibility to to that in, to give uh, in the guardian distractions. So okay, we did they decided to do. We decided to do a study in the day. What is the uh, chemical feature of this uh, molecule that is the responsible of the uh, metabolic instability? And by this reason, we did the meta ID. So this meta ID gives you uh, the formation of mainly two different metabolites that are all of them are corresponding with the oxidation of the aromatic portion. So this is our next step was try to improve additional this metabolic stability. And we are decided to focus our attention for sure in the salad production around the aromatic region. So this is some of the uh, most representative compound that we are obtaining in which the most important major method of this slide is, okay, we are able to, to have good potency in the biochemical assay. We are able to resolve the problem of the air, putting here, or beating this uh, tricyclot ion in here, one, one nitrogen. But this is this ha have a negative benefit on cellular potency. So the main explanation that we did to, uh, to this behavior is we have a compound that saw it a low permeability. So the next step was for sure try to improve this uh, uh, permeability because it's essential in order to have a proper uh, PK profile. And we are focused our attention in the aim. So the primary amine is something that is a really unlikely to have this already confidence. So it's well now that this compound so with a lot of good uh, permeability. So here we are decided to do an additional exploration in order to to, to improve two things. So the first thing was to try to improve the permeability and then uh, it is something essential in order to identify novel uh, uh, amine fragments that give us a joy, uh, the, the new opportunities to cover our series of compound. And we did that. And we did using um, a methodology that is called the equivalent. So this doesn't mean to, to make so many number of compounds in a short time, this time using uh, automatization uh, uh, synthesis, uh, starting from a common uh, building block and then different elements that you are able to to, uh, uh, to select from commercial uh, available source. And we synthesize it in play different compounds. The most important thing here is this compound is not needed the representation. So you are able to uh, uh, now with the activity of this compound given the information of reaction. So this gives us the opportunity on only one week to identify uh, this compound that did in this thing mean that it was completely new and never described in the generation. Also, this activity was not so fun. And we started to work here in order to improve the potency. And in this is here when it's a really brainstorming between uh, the medicinal chemist and computational team in order to try to improve the, the activity and for sure trying to keep the novelty of the series. And there we are decided to do stigmatization, rearrangement, and arrive to this kind of decycling. So this compound was the was did for sure, the nucleophil substitution. Uh, we got our compound. And as you can see here, we have observed that yeah, we have a slightly improved the potency, but was again, as a document potency. And here it started, uh, again, our exploration. So taking in consideration this, uh, this amine that was completely new, then the, the next thing that we did was try to remove all this aromatic ring and put in here this uh, uh, diet point. This literally led to the improvement of the potency in the biochemical and the cellular level, and they tell for even more studies that correspond with the compound. But this value of potency was suboptimal. So it's not a value of potency if you want to, to have a graph. So the next step was try to improve additional potency. But here is starting our, our question. It was about where optimize the amine, where optimize the, the, the aromatic region. So what is the problem of permeability? And the problem of the permeability was to change the core. So we are changing again the central core and putting here this uh, central core that was described in the literature that this is this 
Pilafin uh, pilaf, uh, pilaf, pilaf sorry, that this is a well new signature compound that that's called that uh, atomic helium. And you can see here this compound 342, this perfect in terms of potency, uh, so good in, in biochemical assay, and also in cell basis assay. We prove again that this is a C2 and the same inhibitor by AS grade crystallography. And you observe that we are exactly in the same uh, uh, allosteric pocket, and we are keeping exactly the same interaction. Here, the, the novelty again is this is next to this uh, engagement and a new nitrogen bond interaction, but with the initial uh, uh, backbone of the glutamate uh, 250, you know, the same that was described by Novartis. And again, we are serving this complex uh, water network. But not everything was fine. So, uh, okay, we are able to arrive to improve the potency. We have our uh, series of compounds, but here are serving the main liability. This compound is really active the lab. So, it is a problem. And here, starting as well, as well, again, our sub exploration in order to try to mitigate this potency, this activity, sorry. And to do that, we are decided to modify for sure the, the amine. That is, we know that the amine are relationship with the air activity and the modification of this uh, 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 cycle. So that's I mean, replacement the five, uh, six member ring by five member ring and putting here this substituent in the right hand side of the molecule that gives a, a balances between permeability. We obtain this compound 622. This compound is perfect, a potent in, in biochemical and cell basis assay. It's completely clean in there. Yes, it's completely clean in there. And, uh, but the problem here is that this compound is absolutely sustained. So, okay, it's permeable, but we are not, uh, we, we're not obtaining a good uh, uh, oral biology. Okay, again. Start the game and start to do all the modification in another uh, in all the different uh, region of this molecule. And this modification is successful to the identification of compounds two, three, three. As I told you before, this compound is really potent, it's been permeable, it's the first characteristic different from the competitor, and it's supposed to be uh, efficacious in a brain tumor model, in particular in the glioblastoma, glioblastoma sorry. The result of this discovery will be presented in the FMSG around um, in September. And the main part here is we are able to mitigate the FSPAN function, improving the drug assortion and brain dynamics. So let me spend some words about IRDBM, who we are, and we are with our mission. So IRDBM is a and uh, multi integrated drug discovery organization in which uh, has everything that is necessary for the drug discovery. We have the biology, STA, STEM, structural biology, pharmacology, but the capability. So we work with different uh, uh, therapeutic modalities, so small molecules, peptides, antibody. We have our facility, animal facility, and we are more of 215 scientists. But we are not a single CRO. So uh, we are we we love to work as uh, as well in our internal projects, and we have three different research areas that are represented here. That this is neurodegeneration, oncology, and infectious disease. So uh, IRBM have an old history in Fusbar, and in, uh, in particular IRBM was the old man in Italy, and uh, the most important it is. Coming out from so near BM, there are four compounds of four drugs in the market. So uh, um, was um, a pity yeah, that's a, a really pity story about that. But then the Merck decided after the 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 coming out of the century to close the, the Merck in Italy, and in 2010 it started again the new the new IRBM. So we are so really happy because the, we are different uh, domains in the project, and this is more or less the the understanding of our company. So to conclude with the presentation, I would like to thank to all the people that have been involved in this project in the past year. So in particular, all the medicinal chemistry team, the experimental pharmacology and biology, and for sure thanks to the uh, CNSPCS that is our uh, financial support. 
So um, thank you so much for your data. Thank you. Thank you. This is a tricky word because you need to study all the time and you need to understand what is a cover, what not. So because uh, as well in the given interpretation of the pattern is difficult because there are sometimes that you have an R and you don't know you put some uh, substituent difference. Okay. Uh, but uh, the most important thing of this allocated token is more or less all of them are the same. So you don't have more differences than they do. Okay. So this is a um, uh, Establish it for a certain point. So, the main important thing that you have always to be in consideration is the aiming. So, this aiming is essential to do, to do these three iterative model interactions. If you have different geometry, this is translating a different potency. But you, for sure, you need uh, the potency. And but the potency is possible to follow up or this, uh, this the result by the geochemical assay. So, this is a, a, a establishing point that you know. And you know that that which is the geometry and which is the need that, that the thing that you need for the process. So, thank you. All right. So let's thank Esther again. Thank you.